Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service and welcome to our Super Gang team. Morning everybody from Joel and I and uh, we hope you have a great morning today together. Uh, we're going to be uh, having some time of worship. We'll be having Super Gang come and show us some things and then we're going to have a message from Gareth. Before we do all of that, I just want to say thank you for giving to the Poverty Alleviation Fund. Those of you who've given, really generous. Thank you so much. Uh, please be looking out for one another and uh, let us know if there's anybody who is in financial need at this time and we can see what we can do as a community to help. Before we start the meeting, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this ability to meet together online to worship and adore you and bring you thanks and gifts of praise and honour to your name. And we ask that you, Holy Spirit, come fill every place that we meet today. Come empower us, strengthen us and enable us to follow you day by day, moment by moment, for your glory. Amen. Let's worship.
going to do an, a song that we've not done together, but I know a lot of you know this. It's based on Psalm 23. It's really easy.
Good morning, Super Gang. My name is Ruth, and normally I'm with the Supersonics, but you will have seen me around church sometimes. Today, it's my turn to share my thoughts on prayer with you. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when we pray, we can get really focused on all the details of our lives. And we come to God asking him to do things for us and to give us the things that we need. And it's a bit like bringing God a giant shopping list. I've got one here. We say, please, God, please, can you do this? And please, can I have this? And I need this, God. And the list goes on and on and on. It's absolutely fine to come to God and ask him to help us and to provide for us. But the thing is, is that we also need to spend time celebrating who God is and what he's like. He loves it when we enjoy being with him and when we rejoice over who he is and it grows our relationship and friendship with him. It's a little bit like taking our eyes off a microscope. I've got one here. A microscope shows you little things in great detail. And instead of focusing on the things in our lives that we're looking at, it's like instead looking through a telescope at God's. I've got one. Here's one I made earlier. A telescope helps you see things that are huge and vast in great detail. I don't know if you've ever looked at the night sky, but if you've looked at the stars and the moon and the planets, you will have noticed how beautiful they are and how huge they are and how little we are in comparison to them. And you will have said, wow, that is amazing. Well, looking at God is just like that. He is so great. He is perfect in every way. He's our healer. He's our saviour. He is mighty. He's strong. He is powerful. He's our rescuer. I could go on and on and on. And when we look at God, we remember all these things and it is good for us. And God loves spending time with us like that. So we've got an activity to help you think about that. And it's making your own telescope. It's not a real one, of course, but you can have fun with it. You will need three cardboard tubes. I've got three here and you can paint them or colour them in like I've done with this one. You will need to cut down the length of two of the cardboard tubes with scissors and you may need to get a grown-up to help you. Take your first cardboard tube, roll up one of your cut tubes so that it fits snugly inside the first one and then use some sticky tape to tape it together. Next take your second cut tube, roll it up so that it fits snugly inside the first one and use your sticky tape again to stick that together. If you don't want your telescope to fall apart every time you use it, use two pieces of string. You can stick them inside the length of your telescope from the top to the bottom on each side of the telescope to stop it from falling apart. Every time you use your telescope, remind yourself of how amazing God is and how he loves it when you spend time with him telling him that. Well, good morning, Community Church. It's great to be with you. Great to worship together online again this Sunday morning. I do hope that you are blessed in your homes, blessed with your family members if they're there with you and that you know God's presence with you this morning. Last week, Al kicked off a new series for us on Empowered by Prayer. And uh, today I want to follow on in the second part of that series. We're basing the teaching in this series from a recently released book by Pete Gregg. Uh, the book is called How to Pray, and uh, I really recommend this book. I confess that when I first saw the title, I thought it's going to be quite a basic kind of thing. Not sure I'm going to get much out of it, but completely to the contrary, every time I've picked this book up and read something from it, I have been inspired. I've, uh, I've find myself just wanting to put the book down and go away and pray. It is an absolute classic. So I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend you get hold of that. Today, I want us to focus a little bit on the theme of adoration. 
and looking really only at the first eight words of the Lord's Prayer that says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. In those eight very simple words, we've got actually a really profound tension because on one hand, we've got our Father in heaven. We've got this invitation to intimacy, this invitation to draw close, to uh, express love and to receive love from uh, our Father and to be his children. And yet on the other hand, we have these other four words, hallowed be your name. Those words express something of the, the reverence, the awe, the wonder that we get to come close to the God of the universe, the, the one who spoke stars into creation. It's really mind-blowing to, to understand that actually we, we come before this most incredible, powerful being, and yet we get to call him Father. We get to express love to him and receive love from him. There's this amazing tension um, which is just glorious. It's just mind blowing. Kind of makes you want to draw close and yet at the same time run for cover and, and hide. Um, and I think my experience over the years has been there have been seasons where I I am I'm, I'm just running into the Father's arms, and there's been other seasons where I've just been so aware of His holiness, so aware of of His otherness that um, there's there's that tension has been very real in my heart. Um, this is God we come to and, and it's good for us to recognise when, when we come to pray just to kind of take our, our minds out of the microscope of our lives and instead to focus them through the telescope if you like into the, the great cosmos that he has created and to see him in his majesty and just simply to adore him, just simply to worship him and to align our hearts with the truth of his magnificence um, to recognize that this magnificent God loves us. It's when that settles in our heart that, you know, as that old hymn says, that we find ourselves lost in wonder, lost in love and lost in praise. That's where I want myself to be. It's where I, I believe the Lord wants us all to be as we come to him in prayer. Let me read to you a few words from Isaiah that just speak of the incredible love of this God. This is from Isaiah chapter 43 and then also from Isaiah 54. He says, Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are precious in my eyes because you are honoured and I love you. The mountains may depart, the hills be shaken, but my love for you will never leave you and my covenant of peace with you will never be shaken. What an incredible promise. This is the God who created all things speaking to us about such intimate, tender love for us. Just think, the God beside whose beauty the, the Grand Canyon looks like little more than a shadow has called you his beloved. That that same God whose power makes the, the power of the nuclear bomb like a whisper has said that he has set his love upon you and has tender feelings towards you. If, if that doesn't stir something in your heart of worship and of wonder, then I don't know what will, really. Um, it's just an incredible privilege that we have to come before this God and to call him Father. Some time ago, uh, I remember showing you this image. Uh, it's a, a prophetic painting of uh, someone coming into the Father's presence. The title of the artwork is First Day in Heaven. And, and I just love this. It, it kind of tears me apart when I look at it. I, I see the, the look of complete joy and delight and almost disbelief. Can I really get this close to this incredible God on, on the woman's face in the picture? Imagine yourself in that scenario. Imagine you being that one drawing so close, knowing that, that this is the God from whom all glory comes and you get to come that incredibly close to him. Perhaps you look at that image 
maybe particularly the guys amongst us, you look at that and you think, that's just a little bit feminine for me. I, I can't really relate to that image. Well, I want to show you a video which hopefully will speak to your heart as well. This video I've seen multiple times and every time it just realigns my heart to recognize the love that my Heavenly Father has for me in my helpless state. This is the story of Dick and Rick Hoyt. Um, you'll see that basically the father and the son have together entered into the Ironman contest and they've done this numerous times. Uh, just as you watch this, observe the the love, the devotion of the father to uh, enabling his son to take part in something that brings him so much life and also the complete dependency of the son on the father. It's a beautiful picture uh, and I, I pray that as you watch this that the spirit of God will speak life into your soul and lead you to, to come to the father with, with thankfulness, with adoration and with joy. I'll pick up with you when it comes to an end. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who taught the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening?
Wow, what, what an incredible video, what an incredible image of the love, of the power, of the strength, of the commitment of our Father um, that he has for us, that he has for each and every one of you. This is, this is just a, a faint whisper of the glory of the God that we get to come to when we pray. Um, as glorious as that story is uh, of, of Dick and Rick Hoyt and the, their commitment to running uh, the Ironman contest together, the commitment of your Heavenly Father to you far outstrips all of that. His love, his passion, his dedication to come to you, to come to each one of us and to pour his strength into our lives and to be everything that we need in our weakness. It far outstrips any human image, any human story. And as Philippians 4.13 says at the end of, of that video, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Well, my prayer for each and every one of us is that you will know that the God of heaven who desires for you to call him Father, he is committed to pouring himself into your life to strengthen you and to enable you to do all things, to enable you not only to get through this time of national crisis, but to enable you to thrive through it and to get beyond it into a place of glory. His desire is to overwhelm you with his strength and overwhelm you with his love so that when you come to him, Every fiber of your being will want not just to pray, but to adore him and to tell him that he is worthy. I pray that the images that you have just seen will resonate in your heart this week and that you will be inspired to give every moment, every day uh, to our God, expecting to see his goodness and expecting to experience his love in every moment of your day to day lives. Let me pray for us as we close. Father, you are so much greater. Your love is more than words can tell. We are so intensely grateful for all that you are and all that you have done for us. Lord God, you loved us so much that you gave Jesus for us, that he would die in our place in order that we would have life. And Lord, you have not withdrawn from us, but you pour yourself into us day after day after day. Lord, Will you inspire us to just to long to be in your presence, to long to adore you, to long to give you the worship that you are worthy to receive for all of eternity? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you've uh, really deeply been blessed by today's online service. We look forward to connecting with you in uh, as many ways as we can over the coming days. Do make sure that you're connected to us on Facebook, on Instagram. Do make sure you're registered to receive our email updates from the office. And if you do need to be in touch with us in any way, just drop us an email to hello at ccbs.org.uk and we'll be glad to help you uh, and make sure that you are able to connect to everything that we're bringing your way in these coming days and weeks. God bless you. Have a great, encouraging week. Bye-bye.